Hello, my dear students. Welcome to this Dermatology NEET PG 2023 recall video. So I hope that all of your exams has gone well. You must have attempted the NEET PG 2023 and um, you must have seen that um, you know multiple questions has been uh, asked this time. So in Dermatology what you must have noticed is that usually we were expecting some general Dermatology questions right like uh, psoriasis, vitiligo, lichen planus etc. But none of these was asked this time isn't it. Instead what was asked mostly from Dermatology was something in the STIs that is the sexually transmitted infections also some of the vitamin deficiencies that was asked and along with that a lot of skin manifestations in HIV was also tested so what I felt was that the question paper was not that difficult however uh, the whatever you were expecting and what came in the exam may be a little different isn't it so now let us have this very quick recall video so in this recall video we'll just see, go through like what are the questions that was asked so if you feel like some of the images were different some of the questions were slightly different you can just let us know in the chat box as well so to begin with let us see this first question now so in this first question what is a long term complication of this condition so many of the uh, students who had given the exam this time they said that there has been some confusion like some of them were saying that it was a blue colored face so it was mostly towards nevus of ota so some of them were telling that it was a red colored face more towards the uh, port wine stain or sturge weber syndrome and finally most of them were of the opinion that it was a giant congenital melanocytic nevus that was asked so now let us see this image and let us try to assess now now what you can see in this image is you can see that there is a large lesion which is going to be black in color and over this lesion there is some hypertrichosis as well so this is mostly consistent with giant congenital melanocytic nevus so the correct diagnosis here the diagnosis would be giant congenital melanocytic nevus now why do we call it as a giant congenital melanocytic nevus we call it giant because this is going to be more than 20 centimeter this is going to be more than 20 centimeter now in this case what is it pre malignant to so you know that these are birthmarks present since birth and now if there is a large birthmark like a giant congenital melanocytic nevus this is a lesion which is going to be pre malignant so we have to follow up this patient so that to understand whether the patient is progressing into malignant melanoma so here the right answer is going to be malignant melanoma now let us see in case this thing was blue colored skin so in case the skin was blue in color the diagnosis would have been nevus of ota nevus of ota because according to the site of the lesion that is present whereas in case the skin color was a uh, red in color that is red colored skin with a clear cut midline demarcation then that would have been a port wine stain that would have been a port wine stain which is usually seen in which is usually seen in Sturge Weber syndrome. Sturge Weber syndrome. So in case the image was a red colored lesion, then this red colored uh, lesion, then it would have been glaucoma because you know that glaucoma is a part of a Sturge Weber syndrome. Whereas the actual question that was asked was a uh, image something like this. So in this image, what you can see is a giant congenital melanocytic nevus, which can lead to malignant melanoma. Now let's go to the next question. A obese woman presenting with a history of acne that is resistant to multiple cycles of antibiotics and this is also non-responsive to oral isotretinoin. Now what will be the next step in management? What is the next step in management? So this was the question that was asked and then you can see that an image something like this where most of the lesions are present along the chin area of the patient. Now the options were assessment for hyperandrogenism, assessment for antibiotic resistance, drug induced acne and a dietary modification. These are the options that is given. Now let us try to understand like here the diagnosis is already clear. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is going to be acne. So in acne we all know that the drug of choice in acne can be either a topical retinoid, topical retinoid or it can be a oral retinoid like oral isotretinoin 
or oral isotretinoin. So, so when is oral isotretinoin prescribed in severe cases like nodulocystic acne, etc.? So, when oral isotretinoin is also prescribed and the patient is non-responsive to oral isotretinoin, and also it is uh, the patient is not re is resistant to antibiotics as well. For example, clindamycin gel was applied, minocycline was given, doxycycline was given, but the patient is resistant. So in such cases, what you have to ideally do is, the question says that it is an obese woman. So, okay? so the patient is overweight, so obese woman. So you have to assess for some hormonal dysfunctions, isn't it? Like hyperandrogenism, one of the commonest associations that you will have to rule out is a syndrome called as PCOS. Okay, polycystic ovarian syndrome so or it can be some tumor secreting hyperandrogenic states as well so that is what you have to rule out in the next step so here the right answer would be the assessment for hyperandrogenism assessment for hyperandrogenism and why did i mention that the image is seen over the chin area that the uh, lesions are present over the chin area because this is usually seen in hormonal acne because this is usually seen in hormonal acne, especially when you have the lesions around the chin area. So the right answer here is assessment for hyperandrogenism. So the next question that was asked was regarding the HIV skin manifestation. So here the HIV patient has presented with the following mucosal lesion. Now what can be the diagnosis? Now you can see that there is a violaceous lesion that is present within the oral mucosa. Now here the options given was Kaposi sarcoma, basal cell carcinoma, melanoma and squamous cell carcinoma. So we know that basal cell carcinoma usually presents with a rolled up border over the face, not within the oral mucosa, correct? Also with melanoma, where you can get a black colored lesion, which maybe we can assess it with the A, B, C, D, E algorithm, where there is an asymmetry of the lesion, there is a border irregularity, there may be multiple colors within the lesion, so that is also not possible. So next is between Kaposi sarcoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Now, the question itself says that this is associated with HIV. So in HIV, you all know that it is commonly associated with Kaposi sarcoma. And this Kaposi sarcoma can be can manifest as either a skin lesion the, or it can, so it can manifest as a mucosal lesions. Okay, or it can manifest as a mucosal lesions. Usually in the case of skin lesions, what you can see is a violaceous rash. Okay, violaceous plague lesions are seen or it can also be seen it can also be manifested along a mucosa where, it, where the lesions can be present anywhere in the GI system starting from the mouth till the anal cavity so this can be the clinical presentation so here the right answer would be Kaposi sarcoma since the patient is going to be a immunocompromised patient who is already diagnosed of HIV now going to the next question the patient presented with the following lesions, what can be the diagnosis? Again, the question says that the patient is again HIV. So, patient is again an HIV uh, tested patient and is presenting with these lesions. Now, from these lesions, what do you see? You can see a dome-shaped umbilicated papules and multiple papules are present all throughout the face. So, Whenever you see these dome-shaped umbilicated lesions, what comes to your mind? Umbilicated lesions means molluscum contagiosum. So what happens is the usually molluscum contagiosum is caused by MCV1. So that is seen in immunocompetent patients. Immunocompetent patients. Whereas what is the most common type of molluscum that causes uh, this infection in uh, HIV patients that is going to be MCV2 that is molluscum contagiosum virus 2. This is most common in HIV patients and in HIV patients how does molluscum usually present? It doesn't present usually like just one or two lesions. It usually presents like a disseminated molluscum. Okay? It presents like a disseminated means multiple lesions are present and how do you identify this molluscum lesions? Molluscum lesions can be identified with a pearly white pearly white dome shaped umbilicated papules umbilicated 
papules are seen umbilicated papules are seen so that is how you can identify now in this options they have given you multiple options like cryptococcosis again a fungal infection uh, disseminated histoplasmosis where there can be any, there can be an involvement of the lungs as well as skin lesions can be present again disseminated paracoxidomycosis that is also a fungal infection but here this is more likely to be molluscum contagiosum which is disseminated molluscum which is seen in hiv patients Going to the next one, what is the cause of a painless ulcer that is associated with a painless lymph node? That was the question. Now before we go into the options, whenever you have a genital ulcer disease, we always can differentiate it between a painless and a painful ulcer. So what is a painless ulcer? If you have seen the sprint series, you must have seen that we discussed that you can remember it as LSD. So what is LSD? L stands for LGV, S stands for syphilis and D stands for donovanosis. So these are the examples of painless lesions. So based on this mnemonic LSD, you can easily rule out chancroid and you can rule out herpes genitalis because they are going to cause painful genital ulcers. Okay, you can easily rule out. Now it is between granuloma inguinal and syphilis. That is in syphilis, we all know that syphilis in primary syphilis, this is a painless or a silent disease. Why? Because the patient presents with a painless ulcer plus painless lymphadenopathy when it comes to syphilis, when it comes to syphilis. So here the right answer is going to be syphilis. Now what is happening in granuloma inguinal? That is in LGV how does the patient present to you again LSD that was a mnemonic so here also the patient presents with a painless ulcer plus the patient is going to present with a painful lymphadenopathy and this lymphadenopathy is called as painful bubos so what is bubos these are a lymph node that contains pus suppurative lymphadenopathy is seen in LGV so here there is going to be a painful lymphadenopathy and a painless ulcer so the right answer here is going to be syphilis okay painless ulcer and painless lymphadenopathy now going to the next one what is the allergen that is responsible for the following dermatitis now what you can see here is the some areas of the face is also shown Okay, there is some edema over the face, whereas some areas of the skin just besides the hair can also be seen. So what is the allergen that is possible? So we are talking about allergic contact dermatitis here. Now what can be the culprit here? So based on this image, the culprit can be a hair dye. The culprit can be a hair dye, isn't it? So what are the normal culprits that causes allergic contact dermatitis in a hair dye? There are two options. It can either be a PPD or it can be PTBC, okay, para tertiary butyl catechol. So these are the two options. Now let us see the options. Option A is pollen, option B is balsam of Peru, then PPD and finally exa. So what is the correct answer here? Here the right answer would be PPD that is paraphenylene diamine. So this is a usual culprit in a hair dye which can cause allergic contact dermatitis. Now going to the next one. So again, this is another question from uh, discharge, genital discharge disease. So a patient presents with multiple sexual partners comes to you. So a smear of this patient is shown. So you can see that there is an image of a smear. Now, what is the treatment? So if we should know what is the treatment, first we should know what is the diagnosis. So in this smear, what do you see? You can see that in all these places, you can see there is a gram-negative diplococci. Okay, you can see a gram-negative diplococci, which is present within polymorpho PMNL. Which is present within a polymorpho nuclear leukocytes, isn't it? So, what is the diagnosis here? Gram-negative diplococci, matlab, what comes to your mind? So, this is going to be Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay, this is going to be Neisseria gonorrhea. 
So what is the management of Neisseria gonorrhea? Do you remember? There was two types of urethritis. So in this Neisseria gonorrhea is going to cause a gonococcal urethritis. So in gonococcal urethritis, you can either go for a ceftriaxone. So the treatment was going to be ceftriaxone injection. So the stress ceftriaxone injection was given according to the body weight. If the body weight is more than 150 mg, so you'll be giving one gram. So you'll be giving one gram I am stat one moment this is going to be one gram I am stat whereas if the uh, body weight is going to be less than 150 mg the answer would be 500 mg I am stat so this was a treatment of gonorrhea so if you remember so what is the options here ceftriaxone ampicillin tetracycline and penicillin G so what is the right answer the right answer here would be ceftriaxone ceftriaxone so that is all about Neisseria gonorrhea and the next question is this is a pretty direct question isn't it so easily scorable question it was that is a patient presents with diarrhea dermatitis dementia what comes to your mind four d's four d's of pellagra so where there is a niacin deficiency or vitamin b3 deficiency so this has been a repeat question in almost last three to four neat pg exams so this happened this time also so the options was niacin b6 biotin b12 so what is the right answer here it is going to be niacin deficiency so usually they used to give you an image based question of kessel's necklace Kessel's necklace and all. So this time Kessel's necklace image was not given. It was a direct question that is niacin or vitamin B3 deficiency. Vitamin B3 deficiency. Going to the next one. A baby came with a perioral rash or a perivaginal rash along with the delayed wound healing. What is the most likely deficiency? See, where do you get a periorificial dermatitis? So is there any disease where you have learned about a periorificial dermatitis? Yes, that is seen in zinc deficiency, isn't it? So here the answer is going to be zinc deficiency. So what is the diagnosis here? Whenever there is a deficiency of zinc, the diagnosis is acrodermatitis, acrodermatitis enteropathica, enteropathica. So in acrodermatitis enteropathica, what are the components of acrodermatitis enteropathica? So you can remember the components with a mnemonic DAD, D-A-D. So D stands for diarrhea, D stands for diarrhea, A stands for alopecia, A stands for alopecia and D stands for dermatitis. And what is the type of dermatitis? It is periorificial dermatitis periorificial dermatitis that is the reason why the question has mentioned there is a perioral rash and a perivaginal rash so which means peri which is ara around the orifice so then what is the diagnosis the diagnosis is usually going to be due to the deficiency of zinc so here the right answer would be zinc deficiency now going to the next one there was one of the question which you can either count it under surgery or under dermatology so there was a skin lesion that was shown in the image and they asked you what is the lesions that will grow on trauma so you know that whenever there is a hypertrophic scar and then if there is a growth of the scar on stretching of these lesions and all or any trauma so this the diagnosis would have been a keloid so one of the image based question regarding keloid was also asked in this, this exam and then there was also a question about what is seen in measles. It was quite a direct question. They had, they had asked you actually about the enanthems. Okay, that is the uh, lesions that is present within the oral mucosa. So what is those grey speckled lesions that you see within the oral mucosa in a measles patient? So these are called as the coplic spots coplex spots so this coplex spots was also asked in this exam and i think that is it so we had almost uh, 10 to 12 questions that was asked based on whatever reviews has been said about whoever has taken this exam so what you can see is the overall inference of these uh, recall question is in dermatology usually as you expect 
all those general dermatology questions were not asked. This time they have tested you more with the skin manifestations in HIV. They have also tested you left and right about the STI manifestations. Genital ulcer disease was also asked. Genital discharge disease was also asked. They even gave you an image of a, you know, diplococci that is Neisseria gonorrhea. So all these areas were uh, actually tested. And then nutritional deficiencies. Nutrition deficiencies, all those so vitamin deficiencies even. Um, this uh, pellagra was also repeatedly asked so this was uh, quite an easy paper but even though the normal expected questions was not asked but still i hope that you all must have managed it properly and i wish you all the very best so don't take much tension now the exam is over so i'm sure that you had prepared it very well for this exam and let us wait for the results let the results speak for you thank you so much for watching